Kings. You... My name is Jimmy Jean-Louis, and I am the narrator of the movie. What brought you to this project? I was contacted by, by the director, Lila, and, uh, and she tracked me down for, I should say, a few months. And then I was a bit reluctant, to be honest with you, because, you know, you always hear about the African movies, about the Nollywood movies, and Ghana, what do they do there, you know? I don't know too much about the movie business over there. So what she did was that she sent me the script. I said, okay, because it's always nice to have a script to read when, you, when you're flying a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I read the script on my way to, I think it was to Canada, on my way to Canada, and actually loved it. Uh, I didn't expect anything at all. I didn't know what the story was about, and, uh, and I loved the fact that we were talking about an African hero, so to speak. You know, we don't know too much about the, the, Afri the African history, and I think she's doing a great job as far as trying to educate the world about Africa and, and the history of, uh, of the men of power from Africa. And that's when I was like, hmm, wait a minute, maybe there's something there to do. So I came back, you know, contacted her, said that I really liked the, the, the script, and then that's how we sort of uh, really connected and then we got to meet, and I did the narration, and uh, I'm very happy to have done it. How did your role as narrator play an important part in this film? Well, you know, it's pretty much to set the tone of, uh, of, of, of the movie, uh, telling a little bit of uh, the backstory of, uh, of uh, the hero, and, and, uh, and also about the, uh, well, the so-called the villain, uh, which is Mensa Musa, who was... Uh, uh, one of the greatest, uh, how would you call him? I'd like to compare him to Napoleon, you know, from, from France. Mm -hmm. But he was the, the Napoleon from, from Africa. He wanted to control the whole of Africa. He came from, from Mali, and, uh, and he slowly started to, to take control of, of the whole west side of, uh, of Africa uh, until he gets to that uh, little village of Kotengbi where people had, you know, a lot of spirit and faith and, and, and just wouldn't let him rule the, the, their, their country. So uh, it's very much about, uh, about uh, the spirit of, uh, of the Ghanaian uh, people as well. And why do you think that this film is important to cinema, um, social action in general? What's good about it, once again, it's the fact that we're able to talk about Africa and from an African point of view as well, because, you know, she's from Ghana, she's well-educated, very smart, and, uh, and, and she's telling us about her heroes. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't remember any movies about actually any African ruler. Uh, say, uh, done by an African filmmaker. So I think that's very important. Hopefully, she'll be able to, to cross over with the, with the project. I'm sure it's gonna be a big hit in Africa, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and also, you know, she probably deserves a, a few theaters here as well, just so the people that are interested in those kind of stories can have a chance and go and educate themselves about the beautiful stories we have coming from Africa. Until now, the only relationship I had with, with Africa, as far as movies concerned, was the fact that I've played Nigerians so many times, you know, whether it was uh, in Tears of the Sun with, uh, with Bruce Willis or, or Fat Girls with, uh, with Monique, where I played that uh, African doctor, Tunde. So, which actually took me to Nigeria for the first time because we premiered in, uh, in, in Lagos and Abuja. But unfortunately, I have not made it to Ghana yet, and I would love to go. Now you have a reason. Yeah, I have a great reason now, you know. You know hopefully, I'll be able to go for one of the screenings or even for the uh, second movie of the trilogy, you know. Have you had a chance to see the film in its completed form? I've seen little clips. And uh, 
I think it's very well done. The images are very true to, to Africa, and the people, the cast, uh, very, very true to, to Africa as well. I mean, I saw a little love story, a little scene, and, uh, and she didn't try to glamorize it the same way uh, the American filmmakers would. You know, they'll make sure that they take uh, the prettiest, I mean, when I say prettiest, what we call prettiest, the best looking people, you know, in the best possible ways. Sometimes you miss that sense of realism in those situations. But with hers, with her scenes, what I saw was actually two ordinary people that are being intimate. And, and I thought that was really well done. And, and at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, why not? I don't mind seeing that as well. I might get used to seeing that too. So, uh, so yeah. So I was very impressed by uh, by those little clips and the, the 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 actors. Very very good. Very good. You know, uh, some of them come from theatre because in Ghana you have a lot of theatre actors there. I'm not royal. I'm a hunter. Come with me to the palace. To the palace? Come. As places like West Africa and developing countries come into their own, how does that make you feel that now there are filmmakers in these countries? It doesn't just take an American filmmaker to bring these stories to light. Well, what, what's good for somebody like me as an actor is that it opens other markets mm -hmm. as well. Yes, I'm here in Hollywood doing the Hollywood movies. But at the same time, if we have people like Lila being able to produce and direct great movies from Africa, then it opens a, a different market over there. I mean, Africa is a huge continent. You know, whether it, you talk about Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Senegal, all those countries make movies, you know. Uh, we just have to be able to interact a little bit more, you know. So that's why, you know, when we have that kind of quality of movie that uh, that's coming from over there, you being from Hollywood, you don't mind crossover, go back and forth. So, so yes, I think it's it's good for for the future of of of, of, of the movie business, punto, you know. But but also I have to say that lately, the Hollywood opened up a little bit to movies from different countries, you know, whether it's from China, from India, from Brazil, South Africa. So well, it's about time that, you know, Nigeria, Ghana get accepted as well. So if they come with the right movies, I'm sure they'll have their chances. Yeah. And what are you working on now? What's next? So I'm still on Heroes. You know, we're doing the fourth season now. Uh, but at the same time, I've been doing movies in Paris, London. So I have three movies coming out uh, in the next few months. The first one will come out December 23rd from, uh, from France. It's called Coursier, produced by Luc Besson. So it's going to be a big commercial movie for, for the French-speaking countries. And, uh, and the other ones will come out at the end of, of the, uh, I mean, by the beginning of next year. Uh, I've done a gig as well in England. You know, it's a short movie, 25 minutes. But we want to do the feature next, next, next year. So we tried the short to see if we really had something good, and, and I think we do. So we will do the, the feature sometimes next year. Uh, I've been working on my non-profit organization, which is Hollywood Unites for Haiti. And uh, it's a non-profit that uh, helps the Haitian kids, the ones that are very underprivileged. So we, we try to, to help them in the areas of sport and culture. So opening centers, cultural and sports centers for them so they can go have fun, play for free. Uh, it's a difficult project because you know when when you're speaking non-profit, it's very difficult to to raise the money, to 
to do your your programs. But uh, but me being Haitian, playing a Haitian hero on TV, uh, there are things that I need to to do, and uh, and that's one of them that I'm very proud of. You know, uh, very difficult as I said, but then again, completely worth it. I will gladly give you the throne on one condition. I'm listening. Save this kingdom from slave raiders. the time to pick your sword and run it through that idiotic Winambi's heart. You dead cone. You breathe fire from your mouth, but your deeds are worthless. I'm, I'm very excited about, about uh, the project and, and about the, the two next movie from the trilogy. Because, to be honest with you, I would love to play an African hero. You know, an African hero. And, uh, and, and that's the kind of story that, that she's coming up with. So uh, we might be able to bring more production value. Hopefully she'll get a little bit more money to do the second and the third. And hopefully we'll be able to, to give not just Ghana, not just Africa, but the whole world a great movie. No viade mo. Ton viade kemalio. Nye de kamachi ton domen. La nemlo. 